Hello everyone, welcome to the BigQuery on-demand usage analysis demo. So BigQuery has two pricing models. We have a on-demand pricing model where you pay for terabyte scanned, and we have a slot model where you pay for a specific number of slots and for a specific cost, regardless of the amount of data scanned. So a lot of customers start with the on-demand model and then they switch to the slot model. So this is gonna uh, show you a set of queries that will help you determine uh, which projects or which queries uh, start to make sense to consider switching between the two models. It also will help you uh, determine if you have some queries that um, should be optimized to save on costs. So we're gonna gather three months of uh, past data. We're gonna compute each query's cost. We're gonna count the frequency, so we just, uh, we understand if this is a one-off query or it's being run continuously. And then what do we do with the results? So we're gonna see if the project should be converted to slots or should be considered using our slot estimator. We can also check the uh, tables partitioning and clustering to make sure they're optimized so you're not paying for excessive data scans. A uh, big search is something to consider to reduce your data scans. And also maybe a materialized view will um, reduce costs because it will aggregate data. So let's uh, go ahead and jump into the demo. So we're gonna head over to the BigQuery dataset and the taxi dataset, and let's go down to the uh, routine here. It's the on-demand pricing usage, and I'm going to edit this. So this will have some warnings here, just uh, to let you know if there's PII data or anything that you're uh, in your SQL statement. So be careful who you share these results with. And then um, it's going to do a loop and go ahead and gather all your uh, statements across your entire org. So let's start at the top. So it does create a schema called on-demand query usage, and we will head up there. And let me minimize this. So the on-demand query usage will create three tables. It will create a uh, project table, and this is the list of projects we're going to scan. It's going to export an export table that contains your results and an import table. So this does uh, have a export and import in case you wanted to share this with a different set of uh, users, or you could share this with Analytics Hub. So we create these tables and we create the schemas, and we also create a table to hold the results. And let's get a list of projects. So I have a lot of projects that I run and create, and I also delete them. So you'll see projects in here, um, there's uh, 96 projects. So this is going to do a for loop across 96 projects and gather every query I've ever run in those projects for the past three months. You can also filter this by where clause. So I suggest, you know, just filtering for one project and then it's going to do this loop. So this will get um, all the information we need to do our analysis. It's gonna get the project that it's run in. It's gonna get the actual SQL query statement. It's gonna get it was used a reservation, which is a slot. It's gonna get the number of slots used, average slots, and it's also going to compute the on-demand cost. This is gonna use all retail pricing, so um, the prices in here can uh, be updated based upon um, if you have different pricing. So this will run and it's going to compute the pricing here and it's going to insert this data into the uh, a table for tracking if you have success or failures and it'll insert the data into the export table. So it does take a little while to run, so I'm not gonna run it. Here's a, the run for all 96 projects. And you can see I have errors here because I deleted projects. So it is in a tried catch statement. So it will keep on uh, going through the projects. And then these are optional. This will export the data and reload the data. This was a, a test to make sure this good data could be transferred. And let's also run this and see uh, which projects were successful and failed. So these are uh, projects that uh, were successful and these ones are failed because uh, they were deleted. So that will take a little while and you just wanna run that once and the rest of this will be doing uh, our analysis on the results. So let's see what that actually gathered in terms of the data. So it gathered a project ID. It shows us the actual query uh, used. Um, so this is a SQL statement that was run and then the uh, estimated on-demand cost. So this is cost me about $856 and it's been executed over 10,000 times. So this is a query that I should make sure that's optimized or I should be running this in a project, um, possibly that has slots. Let's walk through the analysis part. So I'm gonna create another schema here for our analysis 
and we'll look at that real quick. So we're gonna uh, create these tables. So we'll walk through this and then there's some looker views. So we have a, a looker studio report. So we create the table, um, a schema, and then we're gonna uh, create tables uh, here. So this is gonna get a distinct and to make sure that, um, you know, that uh, didn't gather duplicate data. If for some reason uh, it stopped in the middle and you restarted it and didn't drop the table. So we make sure we have a, a distinct data set here. And then we're gonna get the 1000 most expensive queries. And it's uh, down here, let me run this. So I insert the data into a table, but I have a SQL statement underneath to, to show this. So these are the queries. It's gonna show us the project year month, the actual SQL statement, the estimated on-demand costs or frequency, and that's gonna show us the average gigabytes process, um, slots, and um, some other information. So this will help surface that information and these are our top uh, 1,000 most expensive queries. So it's a good sp spot just to start looking at on, on how to optimize your costs. So the next thing we're gonna do is create a table and we're gonna sum this up by project. Again, I've uh, run this, so I'm gonna just run the select statement here. And this is gonna show me, here's my projects by my different months. It's gonna show me my on-demand uh, costs, the amount of gigabytes of data scanned, and average job slots, and then I have estimated number of, I believe, additional slots. Let me scroll out here. So runnable slots. So just so you know the difference, the average shop slots are how many slots this query I use. The runnable means it wanted to get more slots and they were not available or you didn't have enough slots um, in your quota. So um, by looking at this, um, these queries could potentially run faster if they had more slots. So that's something I, I keep an eye on. So I know if my queries are, um, you know, could go faster by giving them more slots and not necessarily do you ever, you need every query to go faster. So it's a, a balancing act between going faster or paying for a different number of slots. Uh, the next thing is uh, total cost for each month. So I can sum this up. So this is a sanity check. So I know that I can go look at my bill for my on-demand costs and to make sure that for um, February, it was approximately $451. So um, there's discounts and other things that you could put in here to make sure that we've gathered the data that matches your bill. Now the next piece gets uh, more complicated. This is going to get a minute by minute breakdown of every job that was run and how many slots were active in that one minute period. So think of taking the entire month and carving it into one minute increments and asking how many slots were active in that one minute period. So this is gonna tell me for this month and it's gonna have a begin and end minute and it's gonna tell me how many slots were active for those various projects and um, this will let us understand our utilization. So you could think of a, a bar chart showing each minute of the month and minute one, we might be using 100 slots. Minute two, we might be using 500 slots. Minute three, we might be using two slots. So we're going to get a uh, chart of all of our minutes, and this will um, go ahead and take these minutes and unnest them. So this is going to now take our begin and end minute down here. So this ran within the same minute period. And we're going to take this and map it to every minute in the month. There's approximately 44,000 minutes in a month. And this is going to now take all of our queries and group them into minutes. So we know for this minute number, the average number of slots was 526 that were being used. And when you buy slots in BigQuery, you buy them in increments of 100. So we would have to purchase 600 slots if we wanted to for that one minute period to cover this query utilization. So this is gonna help us gauge if slots make sense um, please don't use this as um, factual, actual pricing that we're estimating because that is a much more complicated algorithm. So the next piece we want to do is compare our on-demand slots um, against our pay-as-you-go pricing. So we're going to run this query here, and this will, uh, looking at our on-demand costs, is about $117, and then we can compare that if we could buy slots, for, um, it would potentially be $39. Again, these are ranges and not exact costs, and this is gonna help us gauge. So if our on-demand cost here was $100,000 and our slot cost here was $20,000, then 
this would be a potential item we'd want to investigate. So my utilizations are low because I don't run a heavy uh, workload all the time. So these are numbers are going to tell us which projects we should take a look at and not necessarily these is your cost savings. So again, we can run a query here to see um, some of these costs. And then what I'll do is I'll put a number of stars out here. So you'll see this dollar sign being repeated and I'll repeat up to five dollar signs or a number of dollar signs and it will help you gauge that um, the more dollar signs you see, the more investigation you should do to this project to see if um, you can save money by switching to slots. So again, this is to help you find the projects that you should go analyze and not necessarily promise exact cost savings. So now I'm going to go ahead and create views. So these looker views are already created. So we're going to create views on all the queries we just uh, did above. And if you look down here, you can clone this looker report. I've already made a copy. There's instructions here to click and go ahead and uh, update each data source. So let's take a look at the looker report. So even though you don't need to go through all these queries by hand, you could just run this whole store procedure and not even dig into the queries, but I wanted to give you the background. So here's our summary. So this is our sanity check to make sure that, yes, this looks like our on-demand pricing. You can now check, um, you could filter by specific month or months. It does use the current month, so it's currently May. So these are my past three months of data. And then you can also filter by specific projects. So these are our most expensive on-demand queries. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And you can see in February, we ran this query 5,000 times, costing us $428. Now, the goal here is to see recurring pattern, patterns as well. Um, we want to make sure that we don't optimize a query that's only been run a couple times and uh, only run for a specific month. So you can filter this and group it to um, see the differences. I don't have a huge cost here, but these costs can be uh, quite high if you're running uh, millions of queries every month. So this will tell you, please go focus on these ones, maybe create a materialized view if you're doing summations, or maybe you could create a materialized view to change the clustering of your table. Make sure your tables are clustered. And if you're doing searching, um, take a look at Big Search. So you could use Big Search to index the table and help you, um, you know, still maintain the same execution count and then reduce the costs. So the next piece here is our slot estimator. So I don't have the dollar signs as I mentioned here. We'll jump over to the tool in a minute within our uh, Google console and take a look at this. But this will show you dollar signs. Again, um, if I had high numbers here, we'd see some dollar signs here to uh, show us these projects should be investigated for possibly converting to slots. And then this is just a pivot table showing your month by month analysis, um, which months and their costs. So let's go ahead and look in BigQuery. So we're going to head over to BigQuery and there's a tool under capacity management. And this is our slot estimator down at the bottom here. And this um, is updated and maintained by the BigQuery team. Um, and it's going to show you your slot utilization. Again, um, customers might have 6,000 sustained slots here. So if this was way above 6,000, the slot estimator might say, Hey, you should be purchasing about 6,000 slots would be a recommendation. Now, once you buy slots, we also want to make sure that down here, you'll see an impact by switching to slots. So on demand gives you 2000 slots by default. So if you're running 2000 slots, a lot of times, and you buy 100 slots, your queries will start to take longer. So there's a balancing act between buying a certain number of slots and locking in a price versus these peaks here. Um, since an on-demand usage, you don't pay for the slots, you pay for the amount of data scanned. So these could spike up real high. We scan the data real quick and return the results to you. So on-demand will have these peaks, but with uh, slots, you want to sort of find a baseline that um, will let you maintain your query performance, and you can go ahead and model that down here. So that's all there is for this. I'm going to jump back to the slide. Um, so thank you for watching. Again, uh, take a look at this and you can run this on your own and check out how you can um, uh, analyze your on-demand usage. Uh, thank you.